Well, the kids can definitely go ahead, have your sweets right now. And while you're busy, I'm going to talk to the adults quickly. And hopefully, hopefully, I'm not promising, but hopefully by the time they finish with their sweets, I'm finished as well. All right, so let's, let's try. Now listen, just like the Grinch was try, he was on a mission to try and mess up everybody's Christmas and try and steal their joy. There are some things that try and steal our joy, isn't it? Or at least so we think. Because I've heard people say, oh, you know, that lady at the office. Or, you know, my kids, they just, they just steal my joy. Or, or Eskim. <laughs> Eskim wants to steal my joy, you know. But it's not quite true because nothing and no one can steal our joy. We give our joy away. Did you know that? We give our joy away. That's why Jesus said in, in John chapter 14, he said, stop allowing yourself to be agitated and upset. And so that simply means that you and I don't have to get worked up of all the stuff we get worked up about. <laughs> it's a simple choice that we've got to make. And so every time Eskim ramps up load shedding from one level to another, <laughs> it's a choice, it's a choice. Every time, you know, you get worked up about that child or... or it's a choice. Every time you dodge another pothole, it's a choice. It's a simple choice that you and I make on a daily basis. Now, listen, let me, let me tell you what God's desire for you and me. His desire is that you and I will live in, in constant, complete joy. That's what He wants for our lives, believe it or not. Let me share it quickly. Let me share with you from the Bible in John 15, Jesus says, these are his words, I've told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be, what's the word? Complete. Complete. He doesn't want us to just have a little bit of joy, but to have a lot of joy, to have a complete joy. Listen to what it says in John 17. So that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. And so God's desire for you and me is to have that complete, consistent joy every single day. Now, you'll notice I haven't used the word happiness because nowhere in the Bible does it say that God wants you and me to be consistently happy. Do you know somebody who's consistently happy? They're just happy all the time. They probably need counseling. <laughs> probably something wrong with them. Because I'm certainly not happy when I drive through a puddle. And I'm not happy when they ramp up load shedding. And I'm not happy when the Springboks lose. I'm never happy when they lose. But there's still a joy, deep joy on the inside. Well, you say, well, what's the difference? What's the difference between joy and happiness? Well, happiness is based upon our happenings. It's easy to remember. Based upon our circumstances. Where joy is a very different thing. Joy is based upon our relationship with the Lord. So if you don't have that, you're not going to have that deep joy on the inside. But if you have a relationship with God, you don't have to depend just on happy, happiness. You can have that deep joy on the inside. And so that means that I can have some stuff in my life that I'm certainly not happy about but I still have that joy deep down on the inside. You see, the mistake that we make is we don't differentiate between joy, let's say joy on this hand, and happiness. We just somehow see it as the same thing. And then what happens? <laughs> we, we base this joy, happiness thing that we have, we base it upon our feelings, upon our circumstances, and the problem is, It'll ebb and flow with your circumstances. So if you have good circumstances, then, then you're good, then you're happy. But if your circumstances aren't that great, ah, oh, then you're down in the dumps because it ebbs and flows with your circumstances. And so happiness is connected to our happenings. But joy, very different. It's connected to our relationship with the Lord. That's why Philippians 4 verse 4 tells us to rejoice 
And the Lord always, notice it doesn't tell us to rejoice in our circumstances because then we're up and down, but to rejoice in the Lord. Now, what does that mean? It means we rejoice in the fact that He loves us. We rejoice in the fact that, that He's our Savior. That's what we celebrate now over Christmas time. We, we rejoice in the fact that He's given us so many promises. The Word is full of promises. And they're not just there, nebulous promises for, you know, good reading. It's there for you and me to take hold of it and to stand and to claim the promises. And I rejoice in that. Every time I read a promise, I rejoice in that. I rejoice in the fact that, as we said, that, that He just he loves us. And so that's what it means to rejoice in the Lord. The moment I start focusing on that, man, joy just fills my soul. And so I think this time of the year, more than any time, any other time, is a time of great rejoicing. should be a time of great rejoicing because our attention should be back on God again. That's why when the angel came and spoke to the shepherds that night, announcing Jesus' arrival, what did he say? I bring you good news of great joy. Let's read it together. In, um, in Luke chapter 2, he says, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Good news of great joy. And do you know that Jesus' joy was unprecedented? Nobody else had the kind of joy that he had. Let me show you from Scripture. Hebrews 1 verse 9, and kids keep chewing, I'm almost done. All right, keep going, don't rush it. Hebrews 1 verse 9 says, you love justice and hate evil. It's referring to Jesus, all right? You love justice and hate evil. Therefore, O God, your God has anointed you, pouring out the oil of joy on you more than on anyone else. And so Jesus had a joy, a deep joy that no one else had. And that's the kind of joy that he wants you and me to have. That's why he says, I want you to have the full measure of my joy. Not, not half a measure, not just a little bit. But I want you to have the full measure of my joy. You say, why? Why is this so important to God? I'll tell you why. From Scripture. Nehemiah 8 verse 10 says, The joy of the Lord is our strength. And so that means when you and I have joy deep down on the inside, man, you'll find you're going to live a consistent kind of life. Not this up and down. You know, you've seen some people, you get to the office, you don't know what you're going to get. <laughs> One morning, she rocks up, she's down in the dumps. Next morning, she gets there, she's up top here again. When you carry that joy deep down on the inside, you live a consistent life. That joy helps you and me to persevere in the tough times. And we all go through tough times. But when you carry that deep joy on the inside, you can just persevere, keep going in the tough times. It helps you and me to be strong when otherwise we would just feel weak and we would come apart. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Now, one of the reasons you and I lose that joy we, we give that joy away is because we take our eyes off of Jesus. And we end up focusing so much on what we're busy, busy with. Because let's be honest, we're all busy. You're busy with this and you're focused on that. And we get so caught up in life and the stuff happening around about us that we lose focus of our God. And it's not that we don't believe in Him. It's not that we think He can't help us. We've just lost focus. And this time of the year, more than any, is a time just to put our focus back on Him. And let me tell you, as we start doing that, you'll find, you start putting your focus back on Him, man, it fills you with a deep joy on the inside. And when you have that joy, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Now, I'm looking at some of the little ones. That suite is almost finished. And so am I. 
I'm done. Bless you.